Come here. Are you going to ever graduate from the Oral Roberts University? I want to know. Catherine Kuhlman, <laughs> I believe in the miracles. And what's the miracle in this? Graduating from ORU is a miracle, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I came from one of those holy rolling churches. They call us the holy rollers, Church of God in Christ. And I always wanted what I saw my grandmother and them having. They would dance oh, around, yeah. you know, and have a wonderful time. But I, I didn't think you really had anything until I got that. Well, as a little child, they didn't really think I was serious. They wouldn't let us play in church. Sometimes people don't think children are serious. And my experience goes back almost 18 years ago when I was a little teeny kid. Well, I took my two little sisters. There was a vacant apartment next door to our house. I took my two little sisters and some pie pans, and they used those for tambourines. See, we used to use tambourines in church, and we still use them today. We went next door, and I founded a church. Oral Roberts founded that great university, but when I was only six years old, I founded a church. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> to but you, it was the greatest church in the world. It really was. It was. We were. We called ourselves playing church, but yet in my heart, I was uh -huh. so sincere. I really was. But I and I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get it. So we went next uh -huh. door and we played. We we'd go through the testimony service, and we knew those testimonies, you know, because we'd heard them in church. Sure. So we'd dance around, and then I'd preach. Well, <clears throat> one day, uh, there were about ten or twelve of us little kids in there playing church. Now, you could see us in the afternoons in the summertime, or after we'd finish our morning chores, begin to migrate from all over the community with pie pans to my little church, you know, because the kids wanted to Make play church. Make believe they were tambourines. Right. Beating them, and, and I'd preach, and we'd dance around and sing. Well, it started growing. Now, see, Mother and Daddy thought we were over there playing church. The people in the community thought we were playing church. But we kids knew we were having church, honey. We were righteously having church. I'd try to preach the best I could. I didn't really know how then. I had the call. I was aware of the call but I wasn't really ready to preach, and I was trying. I almost got away from it during my junior high school years because they were telling me that I was a preacher. And I knew that I was a preacher, yet I wasn't preaching yet. I, I wasn't ready. I was studying the Word and praying and trying to consecrate my life. But I, one day, we were over there dancing around with beating those pie pans, and the lady across the street called the police, said we were disturbing the peace. So uh, the police comes and he steps into the church, now, it really looked like a church. We had built a little pulpit and oh, we had a little table and a Carlson. Bible and some little pews and things in there and some fans that we had snuck away from the big church. And uh, we were in there playing church, but we were serious. Yeah. And the police officer walks, steps up in the door and he says, you kids, we've had reports that you kids are, are disturbing the peace and uh, you're going to have to cut some of this noise out or we're going to send you to juvenile hall. And I was petrified <laughs> because... I didn't know what to do, you know. Everybody was expecting me, the pastor, to say something. <clears throat> so there You're the I, pastor at the age of what? Six. Six years old. I was the pastor of that little church, and my oldest sister was the church mother. Mm -hmm. We had church mothers, you know. And so there I stood, and there all the little kids stood, waiting for a response to see what the pastor was going to say. What did you say, Carl? Honey, I couldn't think of a thing in the world. I couldn't see anything but that man's gun hanging off the side of his leg, which frightened me. So I... Uh, I waited, and I said, Lord, I've got to say something. I've got to say something. After all, you know I'm the pastor. And just as I was at the end of the rope, maybe, the little lady that called the police was there. She stepped out around the police officer. She looked into the building. She saw the little pulpit. She saw the little Bible and the pews. And she said, is this a church? And we all said in unison. <laughs> we were speechless. <laughs> and she, she started crying. She said, I didn't know this was a church. I had no idea. She said, I'm terribly sorry. Officer, I withdraw the charges. Please forgive me. She turned around and called Robert and Junior, her two little boys. They came in and sat down, and I told them about Jesus. And that lady sat there and wept. Her two little grandsons wept, and we all wept. And the officer turned and walked out, confused and a little bit disillusioned maybe, but that lady made her little boys come to our church every day for the rest of that summer. When I was with the World Action Singers, then they said, Carlton, Carlton. Mimic Catherine Kuhlman. Go on. Mimic Catherine Kuhlman. <laughs> so, Carlton, you do it so well that if sometime I can't be on the telecast, all right, mimic me. Oh, I was terrified there, but not now. Um, <laughs> certainly, Catherine Kuhlman. Um, and you've not known anything until I've told you about Concordia, Missouri. 
Oh, everybody in Concordia knows Mr. Coleman. That's my father. And there's not a one thing of the whole world like Concordia, Missouri. You remember that, won't you? <laughs> and all is remember that Catherine Coleman. But I have to say this, and I told somebody I'd say it, and they didn't think I would. Oh, Catherine, you're doing a wonderful job. You know, thousands of people in this whole world know you. Did you know you talk like that? Well, I'm finding it out. <laughs> if I didn't know it before, I know it it's, now. It's a classic, Angel. I love it, and I love you. <laughs> My roommate and I mimic you all the time. In fact, oh, no. when I'm out preaching and stuff, sometimes the, the girls that, and the people that are traveling with me say that um, I do some of the same things you do. You remember you well, christened the thing, me. In fact, you do it better than I do, right? Yes. You christened me. Carlton <laughs> Coolman. Oh, my word. <laughs> Say, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Now, if I could just get a few of those miracles in my meetings, and I'd really be having a time. I knew that I would love him all my life, and I would serve him. And I praise the Lord for every moment. I don't regret one moment that I've lived for Jesus. Carlton, sitting here just talking with you, looking at you, God has great things for you. God has unusual things for you, Carlton. I always remember what the old gentleman said to me as he took my hand in his scrawny hands. He was past 80 then. He said, girl, you're, you're young. There's much to be experienced, but never get out of the will of God. Carl, your potentialities, you have everything. But remember, if I could give you one advice, just one I would say to you, never get out of God's will. And you won't. Carlton, you die for what you believe. That's the reason those thousands and thousands of students at Oral Roberts University have such confidence in you. Do you know what confidence they have in you? Do you know what confidence President Roberts has in you? You know. I, I like to think I do. I'm... You know. And the faculty. And I have such confidence in you. But most of all, he's the one who's the depending on you. Know that. And one of these days, when you've lived your last day, you preach your last sermon, I pray that Thousands and thousands will enter into the gates of glory because of Carlton Pierce. I'm proud of you. I would pray but one thing. Give him the best that you have. You give a Holy Spirit without measure. Give to Carlton the best that you have. He held the position.